Fungus gnats are a common pest when dealing with orchids. It doesn't even have to be orchids. Just leave a fruit out overnight and in the morning you'll be certain to have a gnat or two flying around. So if you haven't dealt with fungus gnats yet, <laughs> as the saying goes, buckle up buttercup. Almost every orchid grower experiences them at least a time or two. But the thing is, they're really hard to get rid of. The great news about this video though is that they will not harm your orchid. They're just a pest. But here's the secret, they do indicate one thing, and that is your potting media probably needs changed. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you for watching this video at Orchidaria where I share my tips of how to grow orchids indoors since my outside conditions aren't that great. Now this video is going to be quite quick because I'm going to give you 10 methods that I've tried on my orchids and how to get rid of fungus gnats and what worked for me. Um, heads up, not all 10 methods work and I will say which one worked and which one didn't. But they have worked for other people. That's why I include them in my list and hopefully one of these methods will work for you. Before I actually cite these methods, let's see a little bit about what these gnats are. And the first thing is they are not the same as fruit flies. Even though they have distant relationship, they're not the same. You will only see fungus gnats in their adult stage of life, which is the third stage. The other two stages are too small to see, which is 1 16th or 1 to 1 18th of an inch or 1.5 to 3 millimeters big. So by the time you actually see the fungus gnats, they have already gone through a whole cycle of life. If you actually get the fungus gnat picture and enlarge it, you will see it looks like a mosquito with two antenna, long legs and wings that look kind of like the letter Y. There are several species of gnats, but there are only a few that will actually bite the orchid leaf. The rest do not. The problem is not really when they bite the leaf because they're so small that they really don't do any harm to the leaf, but where they bit that leaf opens a portal of entry for bacteria and viruses that will kill your orchid. So that's the problem with fungus gnats. In majority, they will not. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you do see a fungus gnat, just don't let it linger thinking, oh, it's not a problem because it will be. Fungus gnats are not very good flyers. They will bobble up and down and not fly in a straight line. So if you space your orchids out, once you realize you have fungus gnats, you can easily stop the spread from one orchid to another. And since they are not straight flyers, they kind of bobble up and down, they're easy to kill, you swat when they're flying. Now, as the name implies, why are they that harmful for the orchid? Well, they signal that your potting media is bad because look at the name, fungus gnats. They're looking for the places that have fungus near them so that, that they can lay their eggs. And these places are usually places with lots of moisture. What does that signal to me when I see fungus gnats next to my orchid? Well, it signals that the potting media isn't draining as well as I would like it to, that that water is accumulating inside the roots. So if the fungus gnat appears near my orchid, I will get worried because the it just signals that the potting media is breaking down and that pH is getting so low that the fungus is already breeding inside of that pot. That's why the fungus gnat likes the orchid because it's a great way to already grow your life and you have all this fungus that they feed on, which is perfect for the little fungus gnat. Not so great for your orchid. So fungus gnats are kind of like the canary in the coal mine. If you see that something's wrong with the canary, you need to get out of there. If you see fungus gnats, you need to get out. So I can really narrow down to three things that the fungus gnat signals. Number one, that the potting media is decayed. Number two, that it's overwatered. And number three, that it's over fertilized because with all this excess fertilizer, they're gonna have a great time reproducing. As for the life cycle of the fungus gnat, there's a what we need to know as orchid growers is the following. They start off as eggs and then they develop into larvae. And the larvae will feed on fungus, but they also feed on decaying material. 
So it might not be that your orchis, orchid roots have fungus in them. It might be that they have bacteria. Now the root rot is a bacteria and fungus feeds on bacteria and gnats feed on fungus. Now a female fungus gnat will lay between 30 and 200 eggs each time she lays eggs. So that's the problem. You think one little fungus gnat's a problem? Imagine 200 flying around from orchid to orchid. Now they also like temperatures around 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius, which is exactly the temperature that I grow mine indoors. Yeah, that's the problem. They love everything that orchids love. These eggs will only take three days to hatch. So that means whatever method you need to, that you are going to choose from the 10 that I'm going to list, you need to reapply them every three days. Now, the bad thing is that after they hatch in 17 days, they're already adult fungus gnats, which means the cycle is extremely quick for these little guys. The main reason these fungus gnats are attracted is the moisture. They just love that water. Now all these materials that are inside your potting media, which could be orchid barks, sphagnum moss, charcoal, perlite, all of these will degrade over time. Each one degrades in a different period of time. So sphagnum moss, if you get a cheaper quality, might degrade over one year. Charcoal might be a little longer. One thing that I do want to mention on these 10 methods is that some will not work for me because I found that they do not attack the egg in the larva stage. They only attack the adult fungus gnat. So the methods that I found that attack all three stages, or at least the beginning stages and not the adult stages, worked better. So keep that as a heads up when you're going through these methods. I'll list the ones that tried, tested, and failed first. Potato rinds. Carnivorous plants. These snap strips or these sticky strips or fly paper as you want to call them. The humidity trap with soap. Fermented wheat popsicle. Cover it with Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Now the first method is called a mosquito dunk and it is a commercial product that's sold under several different names. Probably the most common one is called Nat Troll, which make sure you buy Nat Troll that is specifically for fungus gnats because despite the name, there are Nat Trolls that also work on worms, work on caterpillars and the other little critters that walk around. And what this actually does, it's a tablet and you're going to dissolve it in water and soak this orchid pot overnight. The tablet contains a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis is really <laughs> But anyway, it's right there. So this bacteria actually kills the fungus. It will wipe out all the eggs and larvae inside the potting media. So it works, it's excellent. The second method is actually to use a insecticide. Now I don't like to use insecticides or pesticides inside because first midnight, you know, she's always doing something to my orchid. Yeah, I, I don't wanna use anything that midnight's gonna come in and lick all over. She's always doing something. But if you do have your orchids outside and can keep your animals away from them, you can look at this list right here. And I won't even try to say these. Um, the third way is to use parasites. Now, <laughs> I wish I had more conventional methods, but I don't. Parasitic nematodes is what I think they're called. Are right, it's little creatures from the dark side. <laughs> and they are gross. They will actually infest the larva's digestive system. So it's not the egg, it's not the adult, but they do act in the larva stage and they infest the digestive system and they feed on the host. Now, not only do they consume the inside of the digestive system of the fungus gnat, they also release their own bacteria in their excrement, which, I mean, this is a good alien plot for a movie. I mean, talk about sci-fi here. These can be sold under the commercial names of Scan Mask or Nemesis, but I'll list them right here to see maybe in your area they're sold under a different name. 
And I do want to say that I am not sponsored by any of these. I'm just saying what works for me. I don't like to be sponsored by stuff that kills other stuff. Four, the use of predatory mites. Good gosh. So hypoapsis mites is actually their name. They are going to crawl down into the potting media. They do not hurt the orchid and they will eat everything that is bad and yucky and disgusting inside your potting media, which include the eggs and the larvae. So they're excellent for that. And out of all these little critters that I've mentioned before that you can get, these will last the longest. So they're your best option for that. So those were the four ways, but now you need to know how to prevent them from coming back. Number one, keep your fan on because remember, fungus gnats are very short, you know, not very good flyers. So if you have a fan on, that just prevents them from spreading from one pot to the other. And they really can't compete against a strong wind current. Second, keep your potting media clean. You know, let that water come in and flow out. Do not keep that water inside your orchid for long periods of time. Make sure your orchid is properly ventilated. Always repot within every two or three weeks if you have a Phalaenopsis orchid. A little longer if you have a Cattleya orchid. Number three, don't overwater. You do not need to soak your orchid every other day. You don't need to take it to the sink and really water it and water it and water it. And there is a whole video of how to know the intervals of how much water you should use. And you can watch that up in that corner over there. And number four, keep your fertilizer to a minimum. We have this great tendency of thinking, oh, if a little is good, a lot is great. So we over fertilize. This just attracts more fungus gnats and makes more fungus gnats keep coming back. And I know this was a little longer video, but there was a lot of stuff to mention. And I am serious about the four methods that actually work. So Make sure you take a note of those and don't stop your orchid care here. I can suggest these two videos that talk about different problems in orchid care. And the first one is mealybugs, if you haven't seen that one. And the second one is choosing a potting media because if your potting media is going bad, you probably need to refresh that and get a new one. So I hope this video helped. If it did, give it a like, a thumbs up. Please comment what worked for you. If you have used these methods, if you haven't, or if you have a different method that I can test here and try out and see what actually works. Thank you so much for watching and happy cultivating.